Thanks, Ben. Okay, the first question is, did Jesus come into the world to save the world, to take away the sins of the world, i.e. John 1, first John 129, or do we, I'm sorry, or do you believe that Jesus came into the world to save his own, i.e. Romans 8.29? Also, my sins were already forgiven at Calvary, although I was not yet saved, question mark. Um, and then, or did it require... Or did it require for me to fully recognize and repent of my sins before believing in Jesus and then receive the forgiveness once saved? Mm, okay. I guess it's a three-part question. Renee? Well, I think the key to understanding this is the key to the word repent in regards to salvation. Um, the Bible says, you know, per adventure, God give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Hebrews says, let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Uh, also, repentance towards God and of faith towards Christ. So in regards to salvation, if you have trusted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, paid your sin debt, and gave you eternal life because of the merits of Christ and not your own works, you have repented. You have changed your mind from trusting in your own dead works or dead works of the law or whatever you're doing and have trusted in the work of Jesus Christ. That is repentance for salvation, the acknowledging of the truth that you are guilty under God's law. God's standard is perfection and you will never reach it because all your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And so you need a savior. Acknowledging that fact and then turning to Christ with faith, trust that his death uh, made an atonement for your sins, purged your sins, and now you belong or born into the family of God that you have repented. Uh, now, you, you hear this repent of your sins to be saved, yet that, that is never mentioned in scripture at all. Um, the reason is, is because sin is defined as transgression of the law. So to repent of sin would be to repent of breaking God's law or just keep the law. So now you're adding keeping the law to Christ. And by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So all the law does is shows us our need for a savior. It doesn't save anyone. Uh, so anybody that says they repented of their sins is deceived. Because that is a daily thing we do. We die daily. We are to acknowledge that we died, were buried, and rose again with Jesus in newness of life on a daily basis. That is how we walk out our faith, as we're saved unto good works, not by good works. So nobody's ever repented of all their sin. There are sins of omission that we don't even know we commit. There's sins we commit in our heart. If you look at a woman with lust, you committed adultery. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. So we don't look at ourselves or our own righteousness to be saved at all. We trust in what Jesus did that gave us eternal life. So that is true repentance. So uh, the key here to salvation is knowing you can't save yourself. So the question is, did Jesus come into the world to save the world or take away the sins of the world? Or do you believe Jesus, Jesus came into the world to save his own? Well, people misunderstand that when it, the, Jesus' first coming was to his own. It was to fulfill the promises given to the fathers. That's to the nation of Israel. Okay. But it says he died for the whole world. He's not willing any should perish, but all come to what? Repentance. All would change their mind and turn to him in faith. So it's God's will that none perish. He wants everyone saved. Once the nation of Israel rejected him as a whole, a remnant of Israel did believe, that's the apostles and a small election uh, has, of Israel was saved. Then the Gentiles were grafted in to believing Israel, making one new man, one body, in Christ, neither Jew nor Gentile, neither male nor female, rich nor poor, bond nor free. It's all one in Christ. So he came to save everyone that's willing to put their trust in him. 
The Calvinists believe he only died for the elect. No, he died for everyone. He so loved the world. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Once we trust in what Christ did, we're not called sinners, but saints. And then Paul and the other apostles tell us to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we were called. And the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He won't change his mind. Does that mean the gifts and calling of God are without sin? No, of course not. They're without repentance, meaning they're irrevocable. So uh, God sent his son to die for everyone. But it's through his grace, by his grace, through faith. So you have to receive it by faith. The only reason anybody's lost is because they've rejected Christ. That's it. That's it. That's the only difference between the lost and the saved is one is covered by the blood. The other is not. Um, but yeah, it, God wants everyone saved. He didn't come to just die for certain people. He died for everyone. But if these people reject him, they choose death, not life. Uh, because Jesus gives eternal life to those that are in him by faith. If you reject life, you get death. So uh, that's our choices. Um, and it says, my sins were already forgiven at Calvary, although I was not yet saved. Or did it require me? That, that's the uh, repent of your sins. We've already discussed that. Yes. When Jesus died for the sin of the whole world, God's wrath was quenched. His wrath was poured out on Jesus for the sins of the whole world before the cross, sins that are past, and after the cross. It says he died once for all. Uh, and the law was a shadow. So they would have to give animal sacrifices year by year continually. And it says those sacrifices could never take away sin. But this man, after, all, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Now that is, that's from memory, but it's somewhere in Hebrews. So he paid for the sin of the whole world. Uh, you, everyone is technically forgiven at the cross, but you have to receive it by faith. Then you're born of God the moment you believe. Since God's in eternity, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows them that are his. So um, he did technically die for everyone, uh, but you do have to receive it by faith. Uh, and the key to understanding this is understanding what repentance is in regards to salvation. God repented like 38 times in scripture. It can be in context of sin or it can be in context of anything. I could order a salad and repent and get a sandwich. You know, you can change your mind about anything. So um, although as Christians, once we're saved, uh, if we are tempted by sin, we should repent of that daily, die daily to self so that we can walk in newness of life with Christ. But that's once you're saved. To be saved, repentance is simply to stop trusting in you and trust and rest in what Christ did. All right. Thank you. OK, it's uh, a lot in this question, Ben. What do you say? Uh, well, I think I'll address it piece by piece, uh, and I agree with everything that Renee said. Um, so the first part of the question is, did Jesus come into the world to save the world, to take away the sins of the world? Or did he believe, or did you, or do you believe that Jesus came into the world to save his own, i.e. Romans 8.29, which is referring to the, to the Jews? Uh, well, I think, I, I think he came in to do both. Uh, when Jesus, well, when, when John the Baptist came into the world, he, his purpose was to prepare the way before the Lord. And I think the way he prepared the way is, in the Bible, it refers to people as uh, soil, essentially, or ground. If you think, there's a lot of uh, in, in instances in the Bible, uh, and it's, it's consistent, where it refers to uh, people uh, as uh, soil types or ground. And I believe John the Baptist, in, in, in his terms of preparate, preparing the way of the Lord, he broke up that fallow ground, if you will, of the of the hardened Jewish people who um, were relying on their ethnicity and looked down on others 
uh, because, again, they trusted their ethnicity, thought they were righteous by birth, essentially, just because they were Jewish um, or, or, or uh, children of Abraham. And that's why uh, John the Baptist and Jesus said, do not think that, uh, you know, that we are, do not say within yourselves that we are children of Abraham. Um, and I think, again, John the Baptist called people to, he was trying to try to break up that the heart in their hearts to re get them to recognize no your 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 uh, ethnicity is not going to save you, uh, and you are a sinner and um and so I think John the Baptist's uh uh and Jesus' early ministry to the Jews was kind of uh, dualistic. It was both to say the kingdom of God is at hand, meaning it's I'm off it's right on the table here. If you will accept the king. Uh, then, then the kingdom will be ushered in. Um, so both John the Baptist and Jesus were, were preaching that, and that, that not only the kingdom of God was at hand, but that Jesus, the king, was here, who was taking away the sins of the world, and even, uh, you know, that they should believe on him who was to come after John the Baptist, which is Christ. So again, I think it's, uh, John the Baptist and Jesus' early ministry was dualistic. And the, their message was, now he's the kingdom at hand, but... Uh, you need to be declared righteous by faith in in the king because unless your uh, righteousness exceeds exceeds the the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will know by in, by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so, uh, I believe when Jesus and John were saying, you know, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Again, the repentance there is, uh, you know, repent of your self righteousness essentially. Um, and the kingdom of God is at hand, or kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's basically, again, he's saying it's right at the door. If you will only accept the king, then the kingdom the kingdom will be ushered in. And uh, and essentially, I, I'm glad that they rejected the king because it had the kingdom come, um, I may have never been born, we all never may have been born, and I think the gospel uh, would not have been offered to the Gentiles. But God knew that was going to happen ahead of time. So uh, when he offered the kingdom of heaven, uh, it was at hand. I think it was a legitimate offer. It wasn't like he was saying, um, oh, uh, you know, I I'm offering this in, in vain. Like, uh, you know, it's like it's not going to happen. No, it was, he, God, God foreknows man's will, but he won't, again, won't uh, counter a man's will. And their will was to reject the king. And so for that reason, um, that's why, he, his own rejected him. He came into the world to his own. He came first to his own, but they, his own rejected him. That means his, his, his ethnic Jewish brothers and sisters, they rejected him. God knew that was going to happen, but it was for our, our gain, the Gentiles' gain, uh, ultimately, so that we could be grafted in. And so, yes, in, in, in terms of the question, did Jesus come into the, into the world to save the world and to, and to his own? Both are true. Um, yes, yes and yes. Um, now, with regards to our my sins already forgiven at Calvary, although I was not yet saved, or did it require me to fully recognize and repent of my sins before believing? Well, Rene already addressed the idea of repentance with regards to salvation. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, promising or committing or even trying to uh, stop sinning. It's it's all with regards to stop trusting in that. Uh, it, it, stop trusting in yourself. Have no confidence in your flesh. Put your faith fully in the completed work of Christ in the person, in his person, being, you know, the son of God, fully man, fully God, and his, um, his provision, his offer of, of eternal salvation, uh, which he purchased for everyone by his own blood. And uh, with regards to when you were forgiven, well, I, I think in the Bible it's important, I think there's kind of two forms of forgiveness, if you will. And I think the first form of forgiveness is judicial forgiveness. And that's why it says, for example, in Romans 3, it says, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So again, the law and the prophets witnessed to the, the supreme and complete and perfect righteousness of God. And the, the gospel actually reveals the righteousness of God. It reveals that no one is righteous, and God actually had to send his own son to become sin for us because no law could 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 uh, give life. If there was a law that could give life, Christ wouldn't have died in vain. And and so in that respect, the 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 the, 
The gospel itself reveals the righteousness of God. That not one jot or tittle by by no means will um, uh, be erased from the law, essentially, um, until this this heaven and earth is passed away. And so, because in that, when this heaven and earth is passed away, and we have the new the regeneration, uh, there will be no no one unrighteous, and so there will be no need for a law. Everyone will be righteous. A law is not made for righteous people, for but for unrighteous people. And so, so in fact, anyone who thinks that they're keeping the law to be righteous, they're they're actually declaring themselves unrighteous. And that's it. They may not know it, but that's exactly what its intent is. Uh, that the law identifies unrighteousness. Um, so, and, and so again, it says uh, it also in Romans three twenty three it says for all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God, glory of God, being justified. Again, justified is a legal term. It means that you are declared righteous and um, innocent with regards to a violation of God's perfect law, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation, which is basically, a propitiation means satisfactory, satisfactory payment by his blood through faith to, de to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he may be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So with regards to being just, uh, God again, God's complete uh, righteous, all every righteous demand that God had, that God demands uh, of, of all, every man uh, was placed on Christ, and Christ fulfilled that justice. And because if you if you believe on Christ, you are included in Christ as part of His body. You're no longer um, seen as God, uh, as in the old man in Adam. You're seen as a new creation in Christ. And so, uh, because God, because only Christ satisfies God's perfect justice, He is not only just. In fact, you know what it means by just is that God didn't, didn't overlook certain sins and say, "Oh, I'm gonna, uh, off, I'm gonna." A lot of people believe that God will show leniency or clemency towards sin, like oh, like like they're gonna they they want to diminish the righteousness of God's law. No, that's not how God de deals with it. God deals with uh, His righteousness, His justice, by being perfectly righteous and just, and fulfilling that justice in Christ. And so, if you're in Him, He is the justifier of you because He fulfilled all the righteous requirements God pl places on mankind. And, and so in that respect, that's where, and so when Christ was crucified before we were born, in that respect, we were judicially, uh, it judicially made it possible for us to be for, forgiven with respect to the law. But it's not until you believe it, it is when you receive that forgiveness. And that's why uh, there's a verse that says, you know, um, whoever believes in him receives the, the, the forgiveness of sins. So as part of believing, it should be understood and we should understand and know this, that when we believe, we receive the forgiveness of God. It's not that that's when we were actually judicially forgiven, but that's when we receive it. It becomes part of our identity, and that could, that's when we're actually included in Christ. Um, um, and so, again, uh, and so that's, I, when, we, it's, when we believe is when we, we receive that forgiveness, but judicially, we were forgiven, technically, uh, God made us... Uh, possible for us to be judicially forgiven at the time of Christ's death. Um, and, and so I think that's important. Um, uh, I could go into much more about that, but I'll, I guess I think I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Uh, well, as I said, there's a lot uh, to the question and both Renee and Ben were very thorough. I'll try to be concise. I, I, I agree for the most part. Uh, I think I do have a, like a, I don't want to say subtle distinction, but I, there, there's one point that I think you'll see. Um, my conclusion is a little different. Uh, well, I guess like you, I'll start but with a question. The, the, the first part of the question about uh, did he uh, come to save the world, pay for the sins of the world, or just the elect or those who, who get saved, uh, obviously, this is a Calvinist question. This is one of the <clears throat> main tenets of Calvinism. And this is uh, 
and, and, and the acronym TULIP, uh, T-U-L-I-P, uh, this would be the third point, uh, the L, uh, limited atonement. The Calvinist position is that Jesus only died for the sins of the elect, the, the saved people, not for everybody. And uh, many people find that to be the most objectionable uh, part of Calvinism. Um, I believe that uh, what, what's essential is that each of us believes that Jesus paid for our own sins. And, and as far as paying for everybody's sins or just the elect, uh, is it's not that's not something that is going to make or break uh, you. Uh, but you gotta you gotta believe that Jesus died and paid for your sins. Um, but my my position is that um, I, I made a video years ago. I think the title was um, "Universal Reconciliation, Not Universal Salvation." And so, reconciliation and salvation are not the same thing. They're not interchangeable terms. Reconciled means that you're at peace. You're not. Uh, mad at each other anymore and um, and salvation of course is different in that hey you're you're not condemned you're you're and you're and we we think think of salvation as also um, you have eternal life even though they're really they're different things but if we say we're saved we know that okay uh, we don't have to go to hell pay for our sins and we get to go to heaven and have eternal life that's what we think of when we we think of being saved uh, but when I say universal reconciliation, I, I do believe that the scriptures that say um, uh, in Christ died for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, that's propitiation. Uh, propitiation, it's expressed a lot of ways. Uh, many people have said it means paid in full. It's satisfaction. God's satisfied. And when it says the whole world, I, I believe that it, it it really means that, that everybody's sins have been paid for. And therefore, it's, I guess the, the example I would say is that uh, the when, when Jesus died, I mentioned this, I think, last week, too, that um, there was an earthquake and the temple was shaken and the uh, the um, barrier between the, the public area and the uh, uh, the Holy of Holies, the um, uh, the back area where the public was not allowed. Only the high priest was allowed there. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was, and uh, that represented where God was. Well, there was a curtain between those two areas, and that curtain symbolized um, the, the separation between man and God. Man uh, did not have access to God and, God, and God could not have fellowship with man because sin was the problem. Sin was a barrier. The sin was the estrangement. That's why we we're estranged and couldn't have a relationship with God. So at the earthquake, at Jesus' death, the curtain was torn in half from top to bottom, bottom, and there was the, now the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, is exposed to the public. Everybody can see it. So that represented that the 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 barrier that separated man and, and God has been removed. It's it's done. It's accomplished. As Jesus said, it is finished. I think that's what he meant when he said, it is finished. I've paid for all the sins. Sin is not a barrier anymore. There's no reason why man and God cannot have a relationship because the sin barrier is removed. Um, so I think that we have universal reconciliation and that everybody's sins are forgiven and paid for, but um, we don't have universal salvation um in, in that uh we we lack one thing uh even though our sins are paid for we lack eternal life and the bible bible says that uh i think it's romans three twenty three. uh the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life of jesus christ our lord and the one of the things that that they'll be going into great detail in renee's program coming up next thursday is the idea of um uh do, do we um, naturally, uh, inherently, uh, innately have eternal life? Or is man immortal? Will, will, does man live on forever after death uh, as, as our soul? Uh, that's the, um, the Greek the, um, uh, Platonic uh, view. Plato popularized it and Christianity embraced it, is that we all have an immortal soul. 
but the Bible says that that uh, uh, we we are mortal and we must put on immortality. So we don't uh, we're not naturally immortal. We have to receive immortality. We have to receive eternal life from Jesus Christ. So in spite of the fact that Jesus paid for our sins, we still have the problem of we don't have eternal life until we receive it from Jesus Christ. Um, so I think that is a, a different viewpoint uh, than uh, others hold, but um, I don't have any problem with someone um, thinking that, uh, well, he paid for the sins, but it doesn't apply to you until you believe. Um, I'm okay with that, even though I think that the sins are already, it's already been completely resolved. What we receive with faith is eternal life, not forgiveness of sins. It's all that's done. But we did have a dispute at CES uh, because someone was teaching that you must understand and believe in this distinction that um, your, your sins uh, were not forgiven uh, the moment you believed. That's, that was what was being promoted. But instead, your sins were, were forgiven at the cross. I happen to believe that's true. The sins were forgiven at the cross. Um, but uh, someone was making a big deal of that, saying that if you don't understand this distinction, and if you don't believe correctly, then you are not truly saved. So that's taking this too too far. It's, it's a deep theological position that I think requires uh, a lot of un more understanding than um, uh, they would argue that, well, if you don't understand that, you have superficial kind of faith. You don't understand deeply enough. Um, but... Um, yeah, I think that uh, the, the sins um, were already paid for. And uh, when you believe, uh, of course, if you think that, well, that's when I, my sins were forgiven, there's no problem with that. That's certainly okay uh, in my book, and uh, I would not object to, to that. Uh, the, um, the other, let me see, the other part of the question is, um, did it require to fully recognize and repent of my sins? Well, everybody's covered it all already about the repentance of sins is not necessary for salvation. Um, uh, even repenting of sins is not necessary for fellowship, as some interpret First John. Uh, uh, I, I believe that um, if that was necessary, if God would not have fellowship with us, if we did not repent of all our sins, what about all the sins that we don't even remember or are not even aware of, these unknown sins? Uh, that's why there was a a sacrifice in Judaism for the unknown sins, uh, because we we're certainly not even aware of all the sins that we we have on our our account. And since, of course, since sin is not an issue anymore, then that's also uh, uh, changes um, how I understand this. Uh, but um, we know that in the KJV that the repent of your sins that particular phrase is not in the Bible. Um, now, does the Bible never talk about repenting of sins? No, that's not what we're saying. It is appropriate to forget, repent of our sins, but we don't have to do it to get saved. We don't have to do it to restore fellowship, but it is healthy to do it, to let God know, uh, and to uh, get it all off of our conscience so that we, we're, not, we're not feeling guilty. Uh, so uh, many people feel a great relief to, you know, uh, continually, uh, as it says in First John uh, 1, 9, I think it says, um, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's true. But I don't think that should be applied to the believer. Uh, that should be, that's, that's something we tell the non-believer. Hey, you need to confess you're a sinner. And when you confess you're a sinner, and, and you, you, you have this, you have, understand that, oh, I need a savior. Well, Jesus paid for your sins, and, and, and uh, uh, you're, you're, you will be cleansed of all your unrighteousness. So I'd say, I believe that part of 1 John 1, 9 is directed to the people who are attending church that day who are not believers, just like in our audience right now. I think most of the people listening to us right now in this congregation are saved, but maybe we have some people who are not saved. Maybe you're, you, you had a family member attend today, and uh, and they don't know the gospel. So it's important that in, in every church service, we're not only talking to the believers, but we have to think some people may not believe, so we have to rem remind them that about the sin problem and that Jesus paid for our sins. Um, 
Then let me see. Yeah, I, I think I covered the, the three three parts of that uh, question. Um, all right, uh, any more, Renee or, or Ben? That was a lot. That one question had so many pieces to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was good. Everybody answered it great. Yeah. Yeah, we could easily uh, take all that one question and do the entire program or more. We we've actually could do, probably do a series of videos <laughs> on it, uh, have a playlist just on that one uh, question. All right, Ben, any more?